Welcome to Rocky Broad Solar, where we encourage you to make the current flow. On today's episode, we're gonna take a deep dive into AC coupled solar battery systems or energy storage systems and DC coupled systems and kind of the nuances of each, the pros and cons of each. And so you can have a informed decision on which route you're gonna go. Let's get into it. So solar panels make current or electricity or voltage through a process called the photovoltaic effect. That's why they're called uh, PV panels or solar PV, solar pho photovoltaic systems. Um, so the current that comes out of the solar panels is direct current or DC current. Um, now that's used in vehicles or um, RVs, boats, some really small off-grid systems, but in general, your home and the grid is run on alternating current. And so in order to turn that DC current into alternating current, it needs to pass through your solar inverter. Um, so, so the inverter's main responsibility is to convert that DC to AC current to be used in the home and for the grid. Now, you've got AC coupled and DC coupled energy storage systems or batteries, and, and both have some pretty major pros and cons. So, um, you know, a, a pro of a DC coupled battery system is that it's efficient. Every time that that energy is converted from DC to AC or AC to DC, there's efficiency losses, and and that that just causes reduced efficiency. So with the DC coupled system, it, the, the, that solar panel DC current goes straight into the batteries as DC current because that is what batteries charge and discharge on. And, and so there's no energy conversion there. You're just sending your DC current directly to the batteries. And then when either your battery bank is full or when your home starts pulling power or needing loads, Will, will your battery or your solar then be converted into AC current to be used in the home or exported to the grid, depending on your setup and your buyback plan with the utility. With an AC coupled system, the, 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 you have your, your solar panels, again, going through your inverter, converting that DC to AC to be used in the home or sent to the grid. But then your, your AC coupled battery is then installed on the solar output or the AC side of that solar inverter. And so it takes that alternating current and it, and it transforms it back to DC through another inverter generally dedicated to your batteries to charge the batteries and then discharge back through there, converting it back to AC when your home needs to use that battery current or if they're programmed to discharge to the grid um, in a situation like a uh, time of use where you're going to get more money for your power at a certain time of day. So the pros of a DC coupled energy storage system is, uh, you know, one, they're more efficient. Again, there, there's not as much energy lost in that transition of power. Um, second, the solar inverter is generally made under the same manufacturer as the batteries or they're engineered to work together their communications, their firmware works together. You know, generally when you have a DC coupled system, you're purchasing that all at the same time and you're, you're picking that specific battery to pair up with that specific solar inverter. And so there's gonna be less compatibility issues and things of that nature. Another good thing about a DC coupled system is for off grid systems. So when you're off grid, oftentimes you know, unlike your normal American home, which basically uses only alternating current, in a lot of off-grid scenarios, people will actually use DC lighting and chargers and appliances, again, to be more efficient and reduce that energy loss. So, you know, you can light your home and have a bunch of DC current and then just have a small solar inverter for the loads that you need AC current for. Uh, lastly, is, is that they really, um, in general, are gonna have less expensive electrical upgrades. So um, 
what your your when you there are certain code requirements in the National Electric Code. If you connect an energy storage or solar system to the load side of the service disconnecting means, um, you have to use these solar backfeed calculations in determining, you know, if you can connect to a certain panel, if you can't, and um, you know, basically you're just calculating it by the max output current of the solar inverter. And so with a DC coupled system, that's one inverter that you have to calculate in there. And, and, and therefore that backfeed current is generally gonna be lower, resulting in an easier installation with less expensive electrical work. So another pro of a DC coupled system is that oftentimes you can kind of siphon off power to the, the batteries even while the solar inverter is at max output. So what that means is oftentimes you can put a much larger array on your roof or in your yard compared to the solar inverter in a DC coupled system because what it can do, you know, just say we have a 15 kilowatt array there and a 10 kilowatt inverter. Well, depending again on the specific system and the manufacturer, in many cases, you could have 10 kilowatts coming from the roof through the inverter getting transformed to AC current, discharging to your home loads or to the grid while simultaneously taking that other 5K and sending it to the battery to charge. And, and so you're not really limited by that inverter output where you can send power in different directions. Now, one of the cons of a DC coupled energy storage system is, is sort of a weakest link scenario. Your, your, your inverter is the weakest link. So basically, let's say for example, you have a 10 kilowatt array and a five kilowatt battery and a 10 kilowatt inverter. So th this inverter, um, this array can say, go through the inverter at full output, 10 kilowatts to be used in your home or to the grid. Well, if, if your battery wants to discharge simultaneously, it, it gets restricted there. So you can't take five from the battery, 10 from the array to get 15 to your house. You're, you're limited to the max output current of your inverter of 10 kilowatts. Now let's pretend we have a five kilowatt array, a five kilowatt inverter, and a 15 kilowatt, or, or a battery bank capable of discharging at 15 kilowatts. Well, even though your battery bank and your batteries have that that power capability of discharging at 15 kilowatts you're limited by the max output current of that inverter again so it it will just get restricted to whatever that max output current of your solar inverter is now now that's why again it makes it easier for the electrical system because you you know that at any given time your electrical equipment only has to be engineered to accept the output current of the one solar inverter. Now for the pros of an AC coupled energy storage system. So in the past, the whole real reason for an AC coupled energy storage system was often to pair it up with an existing solar system. In a lot of cases, people just went grid tied. And so you had a, a solar array with a grid tied only inverter feeding power to your house into the grid, maybe in a net metering scenario. And then years later, your homeowner decides to go and add a battery to their home. Well, many times when that, that, that existing system is several years old, you may not be able to even find a battery that can pair up with it as far as a DC couple. That manufacturer has likely moved on and upgraded to a newer and better inverter and a different battery. And, and so retrofitting that can be difficult in a, in a DC coupled scenario. Um, so, so that's where the AC coupled battery really shines is they're what you call inverter agnostic in most cases. And so that means they just take the output, the AC output of your existing solar inverter, they siphon it off to charge the batteries, and then the batteries can discharge to the home. Now I say that's traditionally the reason, but really this day and age, we, we have inverter manufacturers 
um, for a brand new system, all under the same manufacturer, and they, they prefer to go with that AC coupled architecture. And there are pros and cons to that that we're gonna get into next. Another pro of the AC coupled system is that, that you're not limited by the output of any single inverter. So, so these two inverters, outputs are additive. So, you know, say we have a 10 kilowatt array, 10 kilowatt inverter, and a five kilowatt uh, AC coupled energy storage system. Well, you can, you can take 10 kilowatts from the solar array while the battery is discharging five kilowatts to give the home or the grid up to 15 kilowatts at any given time. And so basically you get that additional boost when the sun is shining. You know, if, if it's the middle of the day, your solar inverter is at max output and you want to discharge your battery simultaneously, you get that additive effect of more current. Now that's also one of the cons of an AC coupled system. Because that, that current is additive, you've got to add the max output currents of both inverters together when you are calculating your solar backfeed current and determining how you're gonna connect that system to a home's electrical service. Again, if you're connecting to the load side of the service disconnecting means, that can be tricky or difficult in a lot of cases. And so, in general, an AC coupled system results in more expensive electrical work comparative to DC coupled system. So you may ask, what's better, an AC coupled energy storage system or a DC coupled energy storage system? And the, the answer is, that, that answer is gonna be different for every person. It's really not, there, there's pros and cons to each system, but every home has its own nuances and every rule has its own exceptions. So everything I've said here today doesn't apply to every AC coupled system or every DC coupled system. They're just kind of general uh, rule of thumbs. What's most important is not really AC coupled versus DC coupled. It's really what equipment manufacturer are you going to go with and what solar installer are you gonna go with. You wanna make sure that you have a reputable manufacturer that has strong warranties and is well known for reliability. And you wanna make sure that the install partner that you pair with is certified to install that equipment, is an expert in the industry, they know what they're doing, they're gonna pick up the phone if you call, and they're gonna be around in business for the lifetime of your system. These systems are, either, you know, your solar and your inverters are designed to last 25, 30 years, even longer. Your, your energy storage systems these days, especially with lithium iron phosphate technology, they're a lot, many times warrantied 10 to 15 years and are designed to, to work well longer than that. You really just wanna make sure that, that throughout the lifetime of that system, you have a, a trusted install partner to work with and, and your equipment is made by a manufacturer that's gonna be around and service their warranties for the lifetime of that system. If you got value out of today's content, do me a favor, hit the like button, press that notification bell, subscribe so you can see more videos like this in the future. Maybe go down in the comments section in the description below and, and tell me what you'd like to see out of future videos. If you're a homeowner living in the US and you're looking for a quote to have energy storage or solar installed on your home, go down in the description below, check out that Rocky Broad solar intake form. You can just click on the link, fill out a few details about your specific scenario, and I'll get back to you within a few days with a zero cost, pressure-free quote. If you're not interested in, in, in hiring someone to put solar or storage on your house and you're more of a do-it-yourselfer, again, go down in the description below, check out some of our affiliate links for some great equipment manufacturers that, that I've found out there that have some really great prices at no additional cost to you. It would really help uh, support the channel. Again, thanks so much for each and every one of you for watching. I really appreciate you all. Until next time, take care.